Hello everybody, today we will be doing an oil filter relocation on the Ecotec Miata. These Ecotec engines don't use traditional oil filters. Uh, they use these weird cartridge style oil filters and they're not really the best because they're a little bit on the expensive side. They're a little bit harder to find. And my biggest gripe with them on the Ecotec Miata in particular is that in order to change your oil filter, you have to remove the intake manifold and it's in a very precarious spot. So today with the help of Spalab, which I've worked with before, uh, we are going to get this uh, job done and uh, really make it a lot more user friendly. Spalab sent me all of the AN line and fittings that are gonna be used in this video. I will leave a link to them in the uh, description. Uh, but without any further ado, let's get to work. The first thing I'm gonna do is remove the uh, intake manifold. Uh, you can see I already have it loosened up. Uh, on the Ecotec uh, Miata swap, the only thing that should be going to it is this uh, brake booster line, which I have disconnected here. The actual intake tube and air filter, mass airflow sensor, the uh, actual throttle body, and a map sensor here. Those are all disconnected, so now this should just come out. All right, so we got the intake manifold out. This is kind of janky to do. Um, a lot of lines, especially the nitrous lines. They made it a little bit more difficult, but it only took all of about 10 minutes to get to this point. With the intake manifold removed, you can see there is our oil filter housing. Uh, that black plastic cap on it needs to come out so we can actually access the filter and remove it. So I'm taking one of these special proprietary 32 millimeter, uh, it's either 32 millimeter or uh, inch and a quarter, I forget, uh, sockets that you need to take it out. It just comes off. Spin it clock, uh, counterclockwise. You can see it moving there. So I'm gonna get that off and then I'll get right back to you. You can see with this loose now, it pulls up and that is the cartridge filter. Uh, we could go ahead and take this out and uh, discard of it because we will not be using it again. So this is our CBM uh, oil filter relocation adapter for the Ecotec engine. Uh, it's these two pieces here. Uh, the idea is that this piece, this piece goes into here. Uh, and then this replaces the oil filter uh, and then on top uh, this does not come with the kit uh, I had to purchase these separately these are AN-10 uh, o-ring fittings uh, they just thread right in there uh, and then we could put our AN lines directly onto this and then relocate our uh, and then have those lines go to our remote filter uh, but this is a very snug fit uh, these are machined with very tight tolerances, so I'm going to put a tiny bit of oil on here and then put this into there. So here is this, uh, a little dab of oil, it slid right in. This is actually ready to go into the car now. Alright, a slight correction with this piece. You need this little elbow or it actually uh, fouls on the uh, intake manifold. So you need this elbow uh, and it needs to be clocked in a very specific way. Uh, so that everything will fit in there. This is an o-ring uh, elbow, so it works with this. I didn't have to modify anything. I will flash up the part number right now for this. Uh, this part is not the easiest to find. Uh, it took some, took a, it was a group effort, let's just say that, trying to figure out this part number. Uh, but I have the part number now, you could use it, uh, and everything should work fine, uh, and then yeah, you'll be good with that. So I'm gonna install this now. This part effectively replaces your uh, oil filter. Um, so it goes in just as a oil filter would. It's threaded and with that elbow, it's a little bit, it's a little bit tight down there um, with the intake manifold out of the way. Should have no issues. And it's a little bit tight and can't get a wrench on this thing now because the part that you can put the wrench on it no longer exists but you get this thing hand tight and then it should bottom out yeah it's bottomed out now it won't go any further so you could see how it's clocked now so it's clocked in a way so that this points towards the back of the engine this points straight up um, the company that makes these they make shims so if yours isn't clocked the right way from the factory there's these little shims you can buy 
um, and it makes it so it's clocked the right way. But you need this elbow here. There's no way around that. Then over here, I have the uh, oil filter relocation uh, piece that the filter actually mounts on. Uh, this is an Earl's, uh, and it has this nice little threaded port on the top so that we can run our um, aftermarket oil temperature sensor uh, in our aftermarket instrument cluster that we're making. A uh, bit of a hiatus on that, but I have all the parts now. Because of the worldwide crisis that's going on, there was some delays in getting the parts for that. Um, but I have them now. Uh, that's what this port's gonna be used for, the oil temperature sensor. Uh, and then this is a Wix filter, part number 51515. If you're using this oil, uh, Earl's uh, oil filter adapter here. Um, but yeah, uh, the only things really we have to do now is to insert uh, O-ring, AN-10 O-rings over here and then run the actual lines. And then, well, I have to bolt this in. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I mean, we should be good. This is the Earl's uh, oil filter adapter outside of the car. Uh, first thing we can do is uh, take this little uh, plug out and then insert our aftermarket glow shift uh, temperature sensor. This is, uh, I believe, 18-27 NPT thread. Um, so it threads right in. I'll tighten that a little bit of a wrench, maybe put some thread sealing on it. Um, but yeah, it just goes in. You can see it inside the uh, hole. But yeah, that just goes in nicely. And then these are the AN-10 O-ring fittings. Um, they just thread right in once again. You can mount this in just about any place. Uh, I chose the uh, top of the engine bay uh, near the fuse box because that's a simple to uh, reach place. But I mean, you could put it anywhere and then depending on where you mount it, you might have to mount the uh, O-ring fittings on this side instead. Um, but for us, we are not going to be using those. So uh, I'm just capping these off. These caps come with the kit and uh, they just cap it off. But you can see we have the out here and the in here. Um, so we'll just make that go to the part on the filter housing accordingly. And always, always, always use an AN wrench on these because uh, these are a proprietary size and they're aluminum, so you don't want to scuff them up with like a adjustable wrench. Um, and this just fits on them so nicely that no issues. So this piece is all ready now to be installed into the car. And then from there, we just have to install the AN lines that connect the two parts. So I got the adapter installed now. You can see how easy it is for me to just put a new filter on tight and there's a new filter simple as that so Spalab was nice enough uh, for this video to send out this 15 foot spool of braided stainless steel uh, AN-10 line many thanks to them I will leave a link to them in the description so you can pick up some of this this is great quality stuff and uh, yeah time to get this installed on the car so before we cut the stainless uh, braided line uh, we need to measure the distance from here to here. Uh, so I'm going to do that real quick. Keep in mind that the out on this is going to be going to the out on that, which is the middle. And then the in is, of course, going to be the uh, elbow one, more towards the uh, outside. Uh, but yeah, do not mix those up or, uh, you know, your filter isn't going to be acting as a filter properly and you could potentially damage your engine. So there's a bunch of different ways you could cut AN line. My personal favorite way is taking, uh, some masking tape here. You could also use electrical tape. Electrical tape probably works a little bit better. Uh, I'll put it on the part that I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut right in the middle of this. There's a little bit of wiggle room in there. So if it's a little bit too much, it's not a big deal. And then I'll just take an angle grinder and then I just cut it where I need to cut it, and this tape here prevents it from all flying apart at the end. And it is important that you try and get this as square as possible. So now we can go ahead and assemble our one line. So now I'll demonstrate how easy it is to uh, actually install the AN fitting onto the line after it's cut. So I'll start out by uh, removing the tape from when we cut it. Uh, so now we have a pretty pretty nice clean cut there's really no fraying there uh, and then we'll take our fitting and then I like to use one of these AN fitting uh, installation tools 
Uh, this one is made by Cool Tools. Um, so the way that these work is you just go ahead and put your fitting piece in there and then you take the end of your AN line and you just kind of twist it in there and then it seats it in there and you can see there's like a rubber I don't know how well you can see in there there's like a uh, the inner rubber hose inside the stainless the braided line uh, you can see it goes up there's like a seat on the inside of uh, the fitting so then we take the other part of the fitting so now what I like to do is I'll get a bit of masking tape and I will just put it at the base of this so I can look at uh, look at it to make sure that as we're tightening the fitting it's not uh, actually pulling the fitting off because uh, sometimes these fittings will do that um, these are I guess these would qualify as being compression fittings uh, and this piece right here is actually going to push down on the line and sometimes the line will push out but hopefully that won't happen today so we'll just put that in and then once we can't do it with our hand anymore we'll go ahead and switch to our an wrench all the time making sure that this piece isn't pulling off of this piece be careful with this because i just got a really bad uh, stainless steel splinter under my skin that feels really good and then once you can't do it by hand anymore you could either use a vise or I'm just using a vise grip um, just to finish it off and then once you get the fitting completely snugged up you can see it sits flush to this we can go ahead and take this off now this end is done it's on there nice and tight uh, presumably this is going to uh, be watertight or in our case oil tight and it won't leak uh, but now we just have to do this side so here's the other fitting put on this one's cool because it swivels uh, this one's on nice and tight and there is the piece finished and ready to install into the car now we just have to make the other one so you can see over here the two lines are installed uh, nothing is currently hooked up to this because the new instrument cluster is not finished yet uh, it's not in the car yet, but once that's done, in another video, we'll hook this up. Uh, we also have the coolant temperature sensor here for the instrument cluster, but that'll be for another video. And then, of course, down here, there's the lines on the oil filter adapter. I have to finish snugging down the silver one, um, but I checked, and everything looks like it clears the intake manifold. Uh, so, yeah, that's looking good now. Uh, I have to sn finish snugging that down. And then the intake manifold is ready to go back on and then the install will be done you can see with the intake manifold uh test fit back in you can see this is the line that we just installed and then uh the other line is hidden but you can see the um oil filter uh relocation adapter on the oil filter housing uh, everything fits in there it goes over there and everything fits in there fine so right now just a matter of uh reinstalling like the uh, intake tube and plugging all the sensors back in. But aside from plugging all the sensors back in and getting everything buttoned back up, the only thing left to do is to put more oil into the car. I didn't need to drain the oil to perform uh, this relocation, but if you think about it, the oil system now has a higher capacity because, you know, there's new lines and a bigger oil filter. So you're going to have to top up on oil, uh, let it run for a little bit, and then check your dipstick and then go from there. But other than that, that's going to be about it for today. Uh, many thanks again to Spalab for supplying the AN line and the fittings for this video. It wouldn't have been possible without them. But I hope you all enjoyed. Be sure to like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and if you're a first-time viewer, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you all next time.